quite some time ago, I did a review on a small titanium wood gas stove known as the Pioneer from an Australian company called Goshawk. Well, after that video, I reached out to Goshawk and they decided they would send me a couple of more items to test. I introduced those items earlier this spring. Well, now it's midwinter and I'm ready to give you a review of them. And they are the titanium wood gasifier known as the 206 Atomic and the titanium multi-fuel stove known as the 205 Pioneer Pro. If you're interested in hearing more about these stoves, keep watching. All right, just quickly before we get started, I want to thank Goshawk for sending me these two stoves and a pot and an alcohol stove, which I'll share with you in a minute, so that I could share them with you. So what we're going to do is we'll go down to my bench top here out in the woods. I have a lot of small sticks picked up off of the ground that I can do some demonstrations with. But before we do that, I want to give you the specifications for these stoves and some testing I did with these stoves at home. Okay, so we're going to start with the Goshawk Eddy 205 Pioneer Pro, the one they refer to as a titanium multi-fuel stove. And this is the way it arrived to, to me from Goshawk. It did come in a nice little stuff sack, of course, very much like the stuff sacks. Pretty much all the uh, Chinese-made titanium 750 milliliter pots come in. I have one, another one with me that I'll, I'll show you what I mean by comparison. But this pot is a little bit different. Now, I'll show you the pot first, and then I'll take the stove out and show you that and then I'll take the alcohol stove out because this all came as a unit. So what makes this pot different than most of the other titanium stoves out on the, or not stoves, pots out on the market is the fact that this one does not have fold-out butterfly handles or a bail over the top. It has a separate handle which helps to lock the lid in place when it's in its storage bag. But when you want to use it, you take it out and insert it from underneath like that and then you can use it. The only the other thing that makes it different than a lot of them is this one has a small uh, formed spout for pouring with and it actually does make a difference when it's in use. All right so we're going to take the pot and set it aside and inside is the stove unit. Now inside of the stove I'm going to quickly show you the alcohol stove that Goshawk sent with this. Uh, I'm going to come back to it in a few moments time but I have my uh, Lixata uh, titanium alcohol stove, the siphon stove, the one that is based on the Tox siphon stove, just a little bit larger. Very close in size to this, but there is some differences, so I'll come back to the alcohol stoves in a few moments' time. All right, so here is the stove in its collapsed state. So how do you use this stove? Well, first let me just give you a few look, uh, closer, close-in looks of it. Let me take the internal piece out, and I'll show you the inside. And you can see the secondary jets on top, those little downward triangles. See the fire grate in the bottom. You will notice that there is no ash pan on either of these stoves for that matter. So you do have to be uh, confident that whatever you're setting them on is fireproof. The construction of these is a titanium plate that has been either formed into shape by bending and either spot welded or pretty much all of it, all of it has been uh, pop riveted with little stainless steel pop rivets. You can see them all over the place on this. Very strong. Obviously it takes a bit more time and labor to put a stove together like this, but uh, it's working out very well. I've had no issue with this, the original or the other one that I'll be showing you in a minute. Okay, first off, let me set this stove up in two modes. So this stove being a multi-fuel stove can be used with either wood or with alcohol. Now in truth they can both be used with wood and alcohol and I'll demonstrate the different ways and of course I had to use them with wood pellets to make sure that they would work and they do. We'll talk about that in a few moments time. Since they are wood stoves, the first thing I'll show you is how you would use them as a wood stove. So this is the piece that I took out that it was stored just down inside the opening on the top. And the, what you would do is turn it upside down. I'll come in a little closer. You can see some grooves right here. So that's where those projections on the side are going to go. They just kind of lock in there loosely. And inside of the stove are little pot rests or pot stands that flip over. 
and they can accommodate a series of size pots. So primarily, of course, you want to be sure that it's going to accommodate the pot that came with it, and it does, as you can see, and you'll see this in action in a few minutes' time with some wood. So it works out very well. Now, they can also accommodate larger pots, and here's what's cool about the pot stands. Because they run up at a bit of an angle, I'm estimating 25, 30 degree angle, um, they will actually adopt, or, uh, make use of a larger pot and give it more headspace or more gap right at this area here. And that's important because what it does is it allows for more exhaust room for smoke from the wood to come out of. If you have too big a pot and it's too close to the top of the stove, then it can really dampen down the flames and cool the, the combustion off and cause a lot of smoke. So these little ramped up pot stands help by lifting the pot just a little bit off of the top. Okay, so that's how it would be set up in wood mode. To set it up in alcohol, fold the little pot stands in, turn and lift the top off and turn. And now I'm just gonna put it back in its storage configuration for a moment so you can see where it is. So that's the same groove and the same tab and it just drops down so it's below the surface of the stove. But to use it in alcohol, you lift it and turn it and you notice another little tiny notch right there and that's where it sits. Now it's ready to accept the alcohol stove down inside, which is easy enough to drop it down, self-centers, and it's got a great pot gap of about one and three quarters inch. And I know that's more than the magical one inch gap for alcohol stoves, but the truth is siphon stoves work a little bit different. And my experience in using siphon stoves is one and a half to one and three quarters inch is the sweet spot for using them. That's where you get the fastest boil time and the most efficient use of fuel. So that's it. That's how the stove operates for wood and for alcohol. Now, let me give you some specifications for this one. So the overall weight of the stove, when we remove the alcohol stove itself, the overall weight of the wood stove is 4.7 ounces, which is 135 grams. Its diameter at the widest across the bottom is 3.5 inches, which is 90 millimeters. Its height when it is closed like it is now is 3.9 inches or 100 millimeters. And when you turn it up into wood mode, once again, I'll do that quickly. Now the height is raised to 5.1 inches, which is 130 millimeters. All right, now let me bring in the other wood stove. So inside of this pot, I have the Goshawk Eddy 206 Atomic. Now this pot did not come from Goshawk. This is my titanium pot, the Tom Shoe version. There's Luxata, Tom Shoe, and different versions out here. Same uh, size in terms of volume. It's a 750 milliliter pot. The pot, this of course has the butterfly handles and the bale on top. Otherwise are the same. I set it up like this because one, when I had the pot itself, so why not use it? And I wanted to be able to carry it ready to go. So inside it, this is my Lixata. Actually, this is the Thai Artisan one, which is identical to the Lixata. Again, I'll be comparing to the alcohol stoves in a minute. So on its surface, it looks very similar to the other stove, the uh, 205 Pioneer Pro, but there are some differences. Let me show you inside to start with. Yes, there is an open fire grate at the bottom. You can see the secondary jets at the top, and you'll notice this time that they're rectangular. They're tilted at a bit of an angle, and inside of each one, there's a little flange that it would suggest that it's trying to create a vortex with the gases that come up the outside of the stove and back in through. Does it work like that? It does, but it's not significant. You'll see when, we, uh, when I demonstrate that uh, it's not a dramatic use, at least with wood. With wood pellets, that's different. It's actually, you can clearly see it. Okay, now, the, what makes this stove a little different is that instead of, of a piece that drops down inside of the top, there's a piece in the bottom. So I just move little feet out of the way. I'll show you those in a minute. And inside the bottom of the stove is this extension. It's this extension that you drop onto. It just on the very outside of the stove, turns and locks into place. Now it has pot stands that fold out like that. Feet at the bottom, which fold out. 
And those feet are helpful because, of course, I just made the stove taller and therefore the center of gravity is taller. And when you put a pot of water on top of that, it's even taller. It helps to have these fold out little wire feet to give it some more stability. So here is this stove. This is referred to as a wood gasifier. That's the way that Goshawk refers to it. And this one is designed specifically for the use with wood. Of course, I did use it with alcohol and I did use it with wood pellets. So a couple of things to note that are different. First off, it is much taller. And in that it is taller, not only does the wood gasification work in this, but there is a rocket stove effect because of this chimney. The fact that this is taller than it is wide creates a rocket stove type of effect. As you'll see when we light it up, it really does take off like a rocket stove. It's not a true rocket stove, but it has some of those characteristics. The other thing that's different, of course, is this has a feed port on the side. And I have found that helpful for using with wood because the other stove, if you want to use it with wood and you're starting to run down, all small stoves, especially in the winter, seem to go through the wood, especially fast. So you need two things. You need to be constantly watching them to feed the wood back in and you need a supply of wood. This stove, a little bit less so. To start with, you can put in longer sticks because the chamber is extended by this chimney and you don't have to lift the pot off to put sticks in. You can even feed longer sticks than you would in the other stove as well. It has the fold-up pot stands. Now the pot stands here, rather than just being angled, are stepped, as you can see right here. And what that does, the lower steps fit perfectly for the 750 milliliter pot, but again, if I was using a larger pot, then the upper step would hold it, and again, giving that just a little bit more of a pot gap to allow more exhaust room out. Okay, so now let's talk about the alcohol stoves, and then I'll show you how I use this one with an alcohol stove. Alcohol stove. All right, so these are the two siphon stoves, alcohol stoves that I have. This is the Thai Artisan, which is this identical to the Luxata, which is almost identical to the Tokes siphon, just a bit larger. There's been plenty of videos done on that. I've done them myself. This is the Goshawk version of the siphon stove. Almost identical in size, as you can see. Diameter is the same, height is the same, the internal volume is the same. The construction is slightly different, just showing you the inside. And there's one other difference as well. The Lexata has eight jets just down inside, whereas the Goshawk has 10. Does it make a difference? Well, first off, there's also another thing, which is the weight. The Goshawk comes in at 2.04 ounces, which is 58 grams, whereas the Lexata comes in at 1.76 ounces, which is 50 grams. So the Lexata is a little bit lighter. You can actually feel it, not much, but there is a small difference there. But is there a difference in performance? Well, yes, there is. The Goshawk is a faster alcohol stove when it comes to boiling water. So I did side-by-side -side tests, same pots, two cups of water, one ounce of fuel in each of the stoves, lit them up simultaneously, put the pots on at the same time. And what I got was with the Goshawk, I got a boil time of three minutes, 59 seconds, and a boil time with the Lixada of four minutes, 27 seconds. So almost 30 minutes or 30 seconds faster for the Goshawk. And I attribute that to the fact that it has two more jets, but at the same time, it went through its fuel much faster as well. So the run out time with, for that one ounce of fuel in the Goshawk was five minutes, 26 seconds, whereas the Lexata hung on for another few minutes and ran right up to seven minutes. So I, I, when you look at the differences between the boil times and the run out times, it's pretty much a wash. Neither stove is necessarily more efficient than the other. The Goshawk is just a little bit faster. And again, I think that's due to the, it has the 10 jets as opposed to the eight jets. Then again, it is just a tiny bit heavier too, at about three quarters of an ounce, not quite three quarters of an ounce. So, you know, it, it, that's your, your consideration. If you don't have a siphon stove, and you consider buying one of the two wood stoves, you might as well get the package deal and get the alcohol stove that's designed to go with it. All right, quickly, I mentioned that I use the um, Atomic with an alcohol stove, even though it is not designed for use that way. And I didn't use it in its assembled state. I actually took the top off and dropped it down over top of the alcohol stove. And I get about an inch, not quite, uh, an inch maybe, uh, a pot gap here. So it's not as efficient with alcohol as is the uh, multi-fuel stove, 
but it'll still work. So if you bring your alcohol stove along with you, don't feel that you can't use it with the, the atomic because it's a wood gas only stove. It's not, you can use the top half for a, a, a pot stand for the alcohol stove as well. And the last thing I want to talk about bringing the two wood stoves back in is their use with wood pellets. So let me just finish reassembling the atomic. Okay. So I did some testing with wood pellets. You'd expect no less of me, right? So I loaded both of these stoves up with one cup of wood pellets. I used hand sanitizer as my starter. I lit them both up at roughly the same time. And uh, I wanted to see, basically what I was looking for was to see which, if either of them had an advantage as far as lighting up and uh, bringing water to a boil one over the other, that type of thing. I did not time the boil, but what I will tell you is this, this being the Pioneer Pro, that it, the pellets actually engaged faster, they lit up faster, and they brought water to a boil faster, three minutes faster than they did with the Pioneer Pro. So what does that tell me? They both work with pellets. This one may be a little bit faster, but this one worked just as well. It just took a little longer and the pellets lasted longer. So speed versus long-term use. Now remember this one is designed for wood gasification specifically, and this one's designed to work well with a variety of fuels, being a multi-fuel stove. All right, I think we've talked long enough about these toes these two stoves, let's get them in the fire pit and light them up with wood. All right, I have the two stoves set up in a fire pit here just to give it some wind protection around from the north winter wind, but you can see I've preloaded them with sticks literally picked up off of the ground. The ground is full of sticks, especially after a recent windstorm that we had. So uh, the sticks are, I try to break them off short enough, but some of them are a little taller than others. And that is okay because it's going to take a few minutes before these really start to catch on and start to reach peak efficiency before I'd even put a pot on, regular use demonstration or not. So yeah, it's okay to have a little bit wood. Now you can see there is access space inside of the atomic, but uh, I did chose not to load it right to the very top just to keep them about the same amount of wood. All right, uh, cheating a little bit, maybe. I'm gonna be using some makeup pads with some combination of wax and, and uh, petroleum jelly in them to get them going. And I've got a lot of little pine sticks here that I can, there we go, use on top to give them some starting fuel. We'll watch them for a few minutes and if it looks like it's going to take a while for them to really start going then I'll probably speed the video up a little bit just to save a bit of time. Wood gas stoves are lit from the top for peak efficiency. You'll note that on the website or uh, Goshawk's videos themselves, they uh, have some of their own videos worth watching if you want to see more about these. But strangely enough, they decide that they want to light them from the bottom and use their alcohol stove for doing so. Yeah, legitimate. There's no reason why you couldn't do that way. But if you're looking to get wood gasification going, it really should occur at the top of the fuel load, not the bottom. It'll still happen, but uh, it's much more efficient and the fuel will last you a lot longer if you do it from the top. Interesting, I'm seeing a bit of a different result. Now I've done this with wood, obviously, both of them, but you can probably notice already that the atomic on the right is, uh, seems to be taking off a little faster. And I expect what we're seeing here is the uh, tower stove or the rocket stove effect kicking in where it's drawing more air. And because of that taller than it is wide or diameter, it starts to uh, draw more air in a chimney effect. And yeah, that's what's happening. I'm pretty sure that's why we see the flames reaching a little taller. The other one seems to be catching up now. Uh, for a few more sticks on top here. The wood is a little suspect, there's no question about it. Not that I'm making excuses for myself, but I wanted to test this the way that these were intended to be used. 
and that is with minimal wood processing. And by that, I mean literally picking them up off the ground. Now, any stove that wants to use wood off of the ground is going to be challenged, especially in the winter, uh, with dry or wetness in the wood and uh, cold. So these types of stoves, small stoves, and I have not found one that does not require this, require a lot of attention. They're a high maintenance unit in terms of keeping the fuel fed in them. But some are better than the others, and these both are taking off well enough. So uh, why don't I just wait a few minutes now, and uh, I'll let these go on film. I'll continue to feed them until I'm sure there is a good, well-established fire in them. Uh, then, uh, and I'll speed the video up for you. I can see moisture coming some, out of some of those sticks. Uh, never like to see that, but that's what happens. And once we have some uh, good flame and the wood has gone down below the pot stands, I'll put the pots on just to see what the effect of having the pots on top of both of these stoves is. All right, so the main body of fuel has ignited down inside the part of the inner part of the stove. You can see uh, I'm still seeing the atomic as being the better of the two wood burners. Uh, you can see it's still got that rocket stove effect. It's still going, actually it's going through its fuel faster than the multi-fuel stove is. Uh, I can see gasification taking place, but I'm going to wait till it's a much clearer image of it before I show it to you. I think I may actually have to end up adding a little bit of fuel here to the atomic. As I said, it's going through fuel faster. All right, I think I am ready to show you what it looks like when you put a pot on top as well. So, where are my pots at? So, this is the Goss Hot Pot, and since it came with the Pioneer Pro, I'll put it on top of the Pioneer Pro. It's the one I keep as they go together, and this being the Tom Shoe Pot, I'll put on top of the Atomic. Now, you should know that I just put ice cold water, literally with ice in it, from the frozen lake that we have here, and these are all previously sooted up, so some of the smoke you see is coming off the sides of the pot as opposed to the fire itself, because if you look inside, you get a better image inside of the, the Atomic. There is still plenty of active flame, and here's what I like about the Atomic. Just feed in little sticks right inside through that window. Try and look, trying to find some drier ones. And these are maple. So a little bit more smoke off of the Atomic right now, but uh, both of them are burning. They slowed down, but uh, both of them are burning. All right, in a minute or two, I will uh, ensure that they are still going, and I'll give you a top-down view to see if the gasification is clear enough to, to see. All right, top-down view. On the left is the multi-fuel stove. I can see gasification or secondary gasification, jets of, fuel, or jets of flame coming at the secondary ports. I can see that on the Atomic as well. Both of them are burning very nicely, pretty cleanly, not completely, uh, especially the atomic, and that's of course because there is some wood sticking, that's actually what's smoking is the wood that's sticking out through the side of the port here. All right, let's see if we can wrap this video up with a few closing comments for the Goshawk Atomic and the Goshawk Multifuel Stove. So let's start with the Atomic, and I'll talk about what this does best and what it's not quite as good at. So this stove is designed to be a wood gasifier, and that is what Goshawk refers to it as, and truly it is. This is the better of the two stoves for working with wood alone, and I'll qualify what I mean by that in a minute. And that is for a couple of reasons. To start with, it is taller than the other stove, and that leads to more of a rocket stove effect, as 
as you saw in the demonstration. The fact that I can preload it with longer pieces of stick means more time of fuel in that's, you know, longer time before the fuel is consumed. The fact that I can feed sticks in through the side port without having to move the pot off the side. All those factors together make this a better stove when it comes to working with wood alone. Now, when it comes to the other stove, this may not be quite as quick to light up with wood as it as the other stove is, but this has some distinct advantages. This works better when it comes to using the alcohol, and of course that's what it's designed with the top that you can flip over and turn it into an alcohol stove or use it in this fashion and use it as a wood stove. So there's a balance created in terms of being able to use both of them uh, that way. They both work with wood pellets almost equally as well. This one was a tiny bit quicker to ignite with wood pellets, as I as talked about a few minutes ago, but it also went through the wood pellets a little quicker. But their primary uses, this is wood and alcohol, and the other one is wood. So, which one do you want? Which one do you decide on getting? I guess it depends on what it is that you're looking for when you go out into the woods. I kind of like this one myself, maybe a tiny bit more. I am giving up a little bit of performance of, with wood, but I'm gaining the versatility of being able to use it with alcohol. And that's why this, between the two of them, is likely the one that I would choose to go with more often. Nothing against the other stove. If all I knew, if I knew all I was going to be doing was using wood, that's the one I would grab. But I like using this with the alcohol as well as the wood. Okay, I think that's enough discussion on the two stoves. I have provided you with information on both of them, but of course I will be putting that information in the video description if that helps you decide if you're going to purchase either of these as well as the links to where they can be purchased. But I would invite you to give me any comments or any questions in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.